Okay, when you're looking at these, <clears throat> when it's talking about factoring um, these perfect square binomials, first off, what does it mean when it's talking about, what, what have we talked about before when it means perfect squares? We've used the word perfect squares or what? It started a difference or a difference of squares, right? Is what I've talked about, difference of squares. What is missing in here? The what term? That x term or this time the a term, right? So when we're doing this, we know that it's got to split up to be the exact same but one is positive, one is negative. That's because it, these two things, if one of them is positive and one of them is negative, it's the same number, no, make it zero. That's what's happening. Okay, because if I went through and did this the way we've been doing it with the box, the a squared would go up here and the negative one down here. Well, what are the factors of negative one? One and negative one. So if you put that in there, that's where these are canceling out. So if you start to see this, you should know that a squared will split it up as a and a. Negative 1 splitting it up is just positive 1 and negative 1. So this is when you see these, you can look and see if you can split them up like this without going through and doing the box. Oops, come on now. There we go. If you look at this one. I'm not worried about down. Oh, what did I just do? Didn't mean to do that. Hold on, let's try again. Well, I made the whole thing go crazy. Hold on. There we go. All right. So in this one, you notice that we're missing the, the uh, middle term again. So I split them up. Now, one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. How can 9 be squared split up evenly on each one. 3 and 3. So we'll have 3B and 3B. And what about 4 to be the same in each place? 2 and negative 2. Okay, when, there's, when they are like this with the difference of squares, when these numbers can be split up evenly or where they're split up and they're the same on each one, that's what you can do without doing the box. Do this one. Okay, on this one, again, there's no middle term. And so if I split it up and look and see if I can do it this way, x squared splits up easy, easily as x and x. 9 splits up e evenly. I can have plus 2 and minus 2. So now they're the same. Yeah, that's a 3, thanks. Plus 3 and minus 3. Okay, to where they're the same on each side. Okay, try this one. Okay, on this one, I'm going to go, oh, let me, the thing wants to freak out on me here. Hold on. All right, so let's see if I can get this here. We're going to love it when it does it. All right, here we go. Split it up evenly. D squared splits up evenly as D and D. Okay? Because there's no middle term, I know I get a plus and a minus because that's what's going to give me a, a positive times a negative gives me the negative. Now, if you don't know what number multiplies by itself to give you um, 121, look what you can do. Right here, let's take, it's called the square root. So if I go right here and I press, let me go on the home screen, and you press second and the x squared. That button right there is a square root sign. You put in there 121 and press enter. That will give you the number. So 11 times 11 gives you 121. So that tells me that I have positive 11 and negative 11. Okay, that can be true in any of those other numbers we did. Like if you went through and did second x squared and put in 49. Say I went in there second x squared and put in there 45. Maybe this was minus 45, and we're trying to see if it splits up evenly. 
When you press enter, it gives you a decimal. That means it won't work. So that's one of the ways to check and make sure if this is a um, perfect square. Okay, try this one. Okay, coming up here on this one, I'll split it up and try and figure out if it's a diff perfect square. I know 9 splits up e easily as 3H and 3H. I know I should have a positive and a negative. Again, if you do not remember 144, we can go second x squared. Oh, it's got the writing utensil on. It drives me crazy. All right. Let's go second x squared. 144 and enter it tells me that it's 12 so that makes it easy so I can go in here and put in there positive 12 and negative 12 again to remember how to check our answers you should be putting this entire problem right here into y1 what you the entire thing right here what you think is the answer into y2 and press second graph how do you know that they're that you're correct all the numbers in Y1 equal Y2. Okay, try number six. Do that now. Okay, looking at the difference of squares here again, splitting it up into two parentheses. 25 splits up easily as five, so I have 5K. And 5K. Remember, it goes pot plus, then minus. 64 will be 8J and 8J. Okay, when there's a J squared, it means there's a J in each one of them. Try number seven. All right, splitting this one up. I know I have the parentheses. I know I have a plus and a minus. 16, that'll be 4x and 4x. 49 will be 7y and 7y is what you should have gotten. Number 8. Do number 8, please. On number 8. Again, plus and minus. 4z squared. 4 splits up as 2z and 2z. I'm going to put little lines in my z's. 9 is 3a and 3a. And that's what you should have gotten. Number 9. Number nine, we tricked you. This one you cannot split up. You cannot do this. Because by putting a positive and a negative right here, this term has to be a would have to be a minus. That's why this perfect square, it's called the difference of squares. What operation is difference? Difference is minus. There is a plus right here. You can't go through and do this. To have a positive right here, they both would have to be positive. And that would not make the middle term disappear. When there is a plus in between there, well, let's see. When there's a plus in there, in there, there is, this is not factorable. The only thing you could do is look and see factorable. All right. The only thing you could look and see is see if there was a GCF you could pull out. Is there a number that goes into 4 and 25? No. And there's an A squared and a B squared. There's nothing you can do. This is as far as that one goes. It's not factorable. So you have to be, uh, be careful. Remember, the only way this works is if this middle term is a minus. Oh, I went too far. This is the last one. Let's see if you can figure out how to split this one up. Now, this one will work because there's a minus in there. Okay, this one is a dif difference of squares because I do have that minus sign. So if I split them up, 
and I put a plus and a minus. Um, when I'm looking at this, I know that the C squared, I'm going to split it up as C and C. Now, I kind of want to test something out. What if I put in the calculator? Oh, gee, here we go. What if I put second, the square root button? I'm just curious. I don't even know if this will work. I'm just trying this out. I put in there one ninth. And it gives me this. Do you remember how to change this to a fraction? Go to math, enter, enter. Sure does. It would do it for you. If you put that in there and you put in your um, fraction, you'll get your decimal answer, math, enter, enter, and then it'll give you how it splits up. So right here, it'll be one-third and one-third. Well, that makes sense because one splits up as one and one, nine splits up as three and three. Now here, 64, it'll be 8D and 8D. Now that's what you guys did. That's what you guys um, have talked about. And now let's go on to the next portion.